everybody, welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's fantastic to see you all here. Amazing to see your smiling faces. If you have got a webcam, I can tell already that you are beautiful and we need to see your faces. So turn on that camera and uh, let's see you. We've got a ton of stuff to share with you today and I'm really, really looking forward to introducing um, Elliot Grove, uh, my friend of uh, 27 years now, and we just worked out who's, um, who's going to be uh, giving our keynote. But we'll, we'll come to Elliot, uh, hey, there's Elliot. We'll, we'll come to Elliot in a few minutes. I've got a, a couple of announcements uh, to give you first of all. So uh, first of all, actually, let me, let me switch so I can see everyone's faces here. I, anyone who's been attending sessions, give me a thumbs up. Has it been a good experience so far? Two thumbs up from some people. Okay, I'm, I'm loving this, that's great. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a whirlwind behind the scenes here, uh, making sure everything runs smoothly. But so far, I think everyone still has all of their limbs and uh, some people have been inspired and I feel like I feel like we're in a really good place. So first of all, uh, I uh, welcome to our day two keynote. Uh, day one, I think was a, a pretty good success. And uh, we are ongoing with our raffles and with our presentations. We still have a day and a half of amazing content for people. Yesterday, we had uh, three concurrent rooms. Today, we have four and uh, it's mayhem. And uh, anyway, I'll tell you more about it as we get through today's keynote. I want to give a few thank yous. I, I, said, uh, I said this yesterday as well. Uh, I want to kick off by thanking uh, Robin Walters, who's our conference manager, Aidan Road, who's our assistant manager, uh, Sarah Cohen, Natalie Graham, John Hinton, and uh, uh, Maeve Gov McGovern, who are our room hosts. And also, I want to give a shout out to Madalina uh, ben Dershi, I hope I'm pronouncing that uh, surname correctly, Maddie, uh, who produced our event guide. If you haven't downloaded the event guide yet, then I uh, would encourage you to do so right now. It's at the top of the schedule page. Another little announcement that's fantastic, and I, I think this is live, actually. Let me check if this is live. Pretty sure it's live. Um, or if it's not, it will be soon. We now have a green room that we're mostly hanging out in. So if anybody gets stuck with any technical things, Click the button that will appear soon if it's not there already on the schedule page and uh, will probably be there um, chewing a sandwich and uh, pretending that we know what we're doing. I want to uh, begin by playing you actually uh, a couple of just a couple of intro videos. Uh, great. Thank you, Aiden. The, the link is live. Uh, it's at the top of the schedule page. I'm going to play you a couple of videos and then I'm going to make a little announcement. So uh, let me switch over here. And uh, here we go and share these with you. Let's see if I can move this out of the way. Okay. How do you find that state of mind, that feeling of flow, the lightning strike of inspiration? How can you manifest your ideas in an impactful way? To be creative is to be expressive in new ideas. Be a change maker, be it poetry, drone piloting, or teaching. Join us today to boost your creative streaks and to explore the quintessential essence of creativity. The Creativity Conference. Nurture your creative nature. And that was uh, 
Abby McGovern, who many of you will recognize from our conference in uh, January, who was uh, doing a lot of the work running the event. Uh, thank you, Jay. Uh, now, I'm really excited to mention anybody who, who missed our keynote yesterday, this is gonna be news for you. It's gonna be a repeat for anyone that was here yesterday. About 20 minutes before our keynote yesterday, we managed to get a button that people could click for actually our next event. Uh, we originally set out to host the Creativity Conference in Reykjavik in Iceland. And because of the pandemic, it was necessary for us to postpone and postpone and we moved online. We ran our first conference in January and this today is our second conference. But we are actually now fully booked in in August 2022, hosted by Reykjavik University to host our in-person creativity conference in Iceland. And I'd like to just show you uh, the, uh, the video that we have to introduce the Icelandic conference. I'm really glad to be able to share this with you. So there it is. We are planning a massive in-person event next year. We're still going to make remote streaming access free. We are, uh, it, it is a paid ticket to attend because we're feeding everybody. And we've got venues and costs that we have to pay for, but it's going to be phenomenal. Multiple concurrent rooms for people to have meetings. Thank you, Alberto. We're going to have, um, we're planning uh, interactive dance and choreography classes, Tai Chi, yoga, meditation, uh, breathing exercises. We're planning interior garden spaces where people can meet and find future creative collaborators. We're trying to see if we can install a Japanese foot spa. That's one of my favorites. And we've actually, uh, we're booked in for our movie night at the Ice Museum, which is apparently the best known cinema in Europe. You have to walk through an ice tunnel to get into it. We've got a venue in the center of town for our live music night where speakers from the conference will be performing live. We've got uh, the same venue for our, uh, right in the middle of town for our closing night party. There's gonna be a buffet lunch. It's gonna be phenomenal. And I hope that you'll all join us there. And if you go now to our website and you click on the Iceland link at the top in the menu, you can even buy a ticket today at a massively discounted price. We've dropped the ticket price a lot just for these two weeks uh, from the conference we're holding now. So it's August 1st to the 3rd, 2022. And I, I'm just so excited to be in a position uh, to be able to host that conference for you. So uh, please do join us. I'm, I'm super excited about it. Now, speaking of excited, I have known Elliot Grove uh, for 27 years, Elliot is the founder of the Raindance Film Festival and the British Independent Film Awards. And when I was 19 years old, uh, my friend at film school, Edgar Wright, uh, let, me, um, let me just spotlight you here, Elliot. Uh, Edgar Wright was, I think, the first intern that, that Elliot had. And we were mates at film school. And after uh, Edgar Wright, was interning, he recommended me to Elliot. And so at 19, I remember the most terrifying part of the job was that I was parking Elliot's car. And I actually wasn't a very experienced driver. And I was nervously getting into these little spaces. And, but what an amazing experience. And actually that experience was part of my inspiration 
for the conference that, that we're participating in right now. Because at 19, there I was having these conversations with filmmakers, carrying 35 mil film prints around, talking to projectionists and really being behind the scenes and connecting. And it was a really amazing experience. Before I get into what, what we're gonna do today is, uh, uh, I'm really excited about this because I think it was one panel uh, years ago, Elliot, that, that you and I uh, sat on together, but this is the first time I get to just have a conversation and an interview with you. Before I begin, I'm gonna play a little intro video from uh, Raindance, which introduces a little bit about the Raindance Film Festival. So let me begin with that, and then we'll get into our, uh, our conversation. Absolutely phenomenal. Isn't that amazing? Every time I see your intro videos, I feel like I need to be a better filmmaker. So uh, welcome, Elliot. Thank you very, very much for being with us today. I'm really uh, looking forward to speaking with you. And thanks for emptying the closet about the car parking. I've forgotten about that. <laughs> <laughs> and that video, by the, that video, by the way, was made by our students at Rain Dance, which I think is quite an achievement. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, the, I, I think that that's the kind of the thing for interning, right, is that you're there, you're there to take the tasks that are just time consuming, that don't require your specialist skill, so that you can focus on the tasks you really need to. I remember, uh, years back, you, what was it called now? There, there was a feature film, 35 mil feature film that you produced. Oh, Table 5. Oh, I, I, was it Table 5 or I, Soho? Yeah. So, so we changed this. We changed the title right. a few times. Was it um, six directors, six film oh, directors? Oh, oh, that's right. We, we, we call it the seven day movie because we had six different directors. One of them was Nicholas Winding Refner. Right. Who, who did Drive and so on. Um, yeah. yeah. And then we, oh God, we shot each segment, the same two actors from the same park bench in the center of London. And they had to be brought back four minutes and we stitched them together. That was our closing night film. In the days of 35, we were rushing it to the lab and then I was coming back and then the poor editor had to stick it all together. Literally, on, no, we, we did a digital copy, that's right. Um, and it was screened uh, in the festival, right? So the whole yeah. thing was done, edited and delivered. Yeah. If anyone wants to look at that trailer, I've just put the YouTube link in the chat. And, you know, if you hit the three buttons at the bottom of the chat, Zoom will email you all the all the chat, whatever. Ah, yeah, that was that was crazy. That was that was I'll never do. I've never done it again. <laughs> and I never will. <laughs> but it's one of those it's one of those learning experiences. Right. So I, about a year and a half ago, I directed my first feature. And we uh, finally, <laughs> I need to get the tattoo, but uh, we improvised the entire thing. And we thought, look, it's just about getting enough screen time for the narrative. So we'll, I wrote 77 scenes we could improvise and then we improvised it. And you get to the end of it and you think, well, there's a thing I will definitely never ever do again. But the lessons that you learned are really valuable, right? Which is kind of what we want to talk about today. With, well, you know, I think now that you've 
now they've done your feature, as you know, Max, there's seven different stages of doing a film. The last stage, the seventh stage is distribution of t-shirts. <laughs> oh no, we haven't got t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we actually were, you know, you get to that point where you're thinking we should we should get tattoos for working on the project. And then then you sober up and you realize, no, no, that's, that's a terrible idea. Let's, let's not do that. So so but it, but it reads really nicely. This leads really nicely into the kind of the direction I wanted to take speaking with you today. And I think. You know, I want to get into this whole thing about film school and the, you know, the education services that that you provide and rent as education is this massive organization providing really high level uh, skills but when we first met i remember i was uh fresh out of my first film school and wondering why i had bothered to go to film school because ultimately i just used my time to get the gear and and now the the even consumer grade equipment is so great that you can shoot things on a phone what was the right back at the beginning where you created, you know, Rain Dance and the Independent Film Awards? What was really driving you then? What was it that that made you think that you would put that effort into organizing something like that? Well, I started Rain Dance at a really terrible point in my life. I'd moved to from Toronto, my hometown. Any Canadians here today? Must be. Oh, I'm the only one, maybe. Anyway, uh, I moved to London. I fancied myself a property entrepreneur, buying and renovating flats in the center of London. I have no film experience at all. And then I went spectacularly bust in the big recession, 1991. Interest rates went to 24%. I lost absolutely everything. I had a wife and two kids. Um, but at that time I was living just outside London in a national trust property, a thousand years old. The last crusade left from there. And Farmer Fred, who had the surrounding 50 acres, knew it gone bust. And for a whole year, he saw me walking around, moping around, feeling sorry for myself. And one day he called me on it. He said, you know, you know, no doctor in the world can help you as long as you're feeling sorry for yourself. So I pondered that and I said, what should I do? And he said, do what you love. Why well, love movies? Now, I grew up in a very a strict Protestant sect called Amish, the horse and buggy people, I was always told never ever to go to see movies. My grandparents would say things to me like, you don't want to be caught dead in a cinema when Jesus comes back, do you? And here I am today helping you, Maxim, do the devil's work. Anyway, I was 16. My first movie experience, I was 16, hot summer's day. I had a few coins in my pocket. I get sent into the local village outside Toronto. I'd, a part broke down in the farm and my dad couldn't fix it. I get sent into the blacksmith. Uh, and when I found out it was going to take three long hours to get it fixed, you said it wasn't worth me going all the way home and coming back. I was 16, hot summer's day, about two o'clock in the afternoon. I had a few coins in my pocket and maybe you as Maxim at 16. I was wondering what the devil looked like. And there it was, three doors down from the house of the Lord, the house of the devil, the movie theater. I walked up and in those days, they were only ch charging 99 cents to see what the devil looked like. I paid my money. Remember, I had no idea what a movie was. I paid my money, went down this like tunnel into a big room, a bit like church, you know, with chairs lined up facing the front. I sat down, a couple other people there, two in the afternoon. I noticed that the fabric on the chairs was red. Ah, they turned the flipping lights off. The curtains opened and the first face of the devil I saw at the most tender age of 16 was Lassie comes home. And I cried like a baby in the end. I rushed up to feel the screen to see if I could feel that it was all gone in twinkling of an eye. And that's what made when Farmer Fred said, you know, you love movies, do what you love. I love movies. I knew nothing. And I started it like a total idiot, knowing nothing. And here I am 30 years later talking to you, who I've known my for 27 is, years. <laughs> my mind is just blown. I, I just, so a farmer gave you this profound, I mean, it sounds like Buddhism to me. It's like this profound life advice. You might as well do what you love. And that well, gave you the confidence to just go for it. Yeah, well, there's many things I learned uh, as a kid on the farm. 
that I, I used to be embarrassed by. But my granddad, one day in harvest season again, uh, uh, horses were coming down with a, a wagon full of grain. Uh, some of the men were on one side of the laneway scything and harvesting and the other side they were plowing and planting winter wheat you always plant that in the fall it comes up first the frost kills it down it's the first stop in the spring but that gives you the real soft wheat grain that you can sell for a bit higher price and that wagon comes down he took a handful of seeds in his hand he said son always have three seeds one in your hand one that you're planting and one if you're harvesting and this is great advice for us as creatives something that you're marketing something that's finished that you're marketing, something that you're thinking about but haven't actually started doing, but one that you're actually doing. And I, I think it's simple, these patterns that I was taught as a kid have, have helped me a lot, um, but that might sound very pompous and overblown, but hey, I'm a farm boy, I know nothing about movies. Well, you know, I've met so many people that are film producers and film directors, and you get, you know, I mean, thinking of Edgar Wright again, you know, at 19, he could tell you, goodness. I mean, he could tell you the lead actors and the key bottle line crew on any feature film you care to mention. You could just tell, yeah, like he really knows his subject. But most of the people that I've met, they begin without any of that knowledge at all. They just feel, they just feel it, right? They just feel it and they trust that feeling and, and they go for it. But when, but, so you started out thinking, right, I'm going to get involved in films, but, but there's a difference right? There's a difference between making films and helping other people make films, right? So the film awards and the rain dance festival, that that's about celebrating it for other people, isn't it? What, yeah, what yeah. got you turned on to that idea? Well, it's just a celebration. You see, when I met Edgar and when I met you all those years ago, I met Chris Nolan. Uh, about the year after you left, he, he was struggling to make his first film. And I realized that back then, <clears throat> Well, in the 60s and 70s, there was 100, 150 features made every year in the UK. But the year I started Rain Dance, 1992, only six. One of them, My Beautiful Laundrette. Huh. Stephen Frears is, now he'd done movies for TV, the first cinema movie. And I was trying to figure out why this nation went from all these films down to so few. And then I, I realized television hit the UK in the mid 70s. Hmm. And my theory is that all the filmmakers, now in film, you can make feast or famine, right? You can eat really well, but you don't eat very often. And they forsook the feast or famine lifestyle for the, I can eat every week, maybe not as well, but at least I can eat every week in television, which might explain why all the film people went to TV, might explain why there's so much great TV coming from the United Kingdom. This dull, damp, dirty, COVID infested island does produce fantastic television, right? Yeah. So, and then, and then, and at that time, funding all came from the UK Film Council, now the British Film Institute, and you're either in or out. And I was definitely out. And by the way, as my little moan, Maxim, I think I've told you this before, I started applying for public funding in the United Kingdom for the festival. Mm. 38 times I've applied and 38 times I have been turned down. <laughs> Do they ever, because sometimes they commit to, to giving feedback, right? I remember years ago applying for a whole, a whole grant for an innovation thing I was doing. And they said, we give you full feedback on, on the application. And their entire feedback was, it is not innovative enough. That was <laughs> So what, what reasons do they give you? They never gave me a reason. Uh, I think it's professional jealousy. You see, what I've done, luckily, and a lot of help to you too back in the early days, is disruptive. And I think that's a lesson for all of us today. We've got the big Netflixes, the big streamers, for example, but the little streamers, the movie, the European one, Shudder, the horror one, and many other ones, are desperate for content and they're actually producing and putting money into films now, but at budgets of two to 500,000, not five to 10 million like Netflix. And if I gave anyone here half a million dollars, which by the way, I cannot, but if I could, and you had half a million dollars, you could do some serious storytelling. Yeah. And that's the other thing I've learned is, first of all, you know, it's, it's all about story. We have had over the years, many, many short films produced with government finance with budgets of eight to 10,000 pounds or dollars per minute yeah. that are beautifully shot, beautifully edited, beautifully costumes, well acted, 
zero story, as opposed to film shot on cell phones for literally next to nothing. When we had Blair Witch, everyone said, what? Now that's the other point I wanna make. Sometimes you can make a film that is okay as Blair Witch, but it's a tremendous marketing strategy. Mm. And I guess that's something, again, I learned from the farm. Um, we had a dairy farm and um, every day my dad would take the, the little quart milk bottles to the local village and sell it, come back, always got back at lunchtime. And those glass bottles would have Grove Dairy written in blue. But one month they sent Grove Dairy written in orange. And he said, oh, I don't like orange. But you know what, that day he got back an hour early, hour earlier, end of the month, they sent blue bottles, hour later, he couldn't figure that out. So I'm a little kid, about six in the dairy. He fills up two bottles, one with the blue label, Grove Dairy, one with the orange. And he said, do you know what? The milk in the orange labeled bottle looks creamier. So we went back to orange. So I think the trick is, for us creatives is to make our milk look creamier using <laughs> these days, the power of social media um, and, and your, especially movies and books, your campaign image. Mm -hmm. um, were you around the year that Roger Corman came to the festival? It was a year, he was 96, maybe you were 95, I can't remember. I think I was 90, 94. 94. Yeah, yeah. Well, Roger Corman, C-O-R-M-A-N, the king of independence. He's 95 this year, still wow. producing 30 odd movies a year, produced over 850, never lost a dime. He was our guest in 1974, uh, 1996, at the age of 74, complaining bitterly to me that that year he was only producing 38 feature films. I couldn't believe it. Now he's a morning guy. He would come into my office every morning with all the British national newspapers and eight o'clock over coffee, he would tear out keywords from the newspapers, mash them up on the coffee table. And when he saw what made a good movie title, he would write it down. This is how he came up with his 1975 classic, The Fast and the Fu Furious, 1978. Death Race, which of course he's sold many times on the, the remake rights. Anyway, he'd get the title. I would fax it off to Los Angeles. He'd come back at six. LA was open and through my old, do you remember those thin paper fax machines? Yeah, yeah. Would come these low res posters, title of movie, log line image. He would rip it off if he liked it, shove it in his pocket. And that night circulated with all the financiers, distributors, talent agents, and he would show it to them. And the next morning he would tell me if enough people liked the poster, he would hire a screenwriter upon his return to Los Angeles in a fortnight, he would hire a screenwriter to write the movie the poster suggested because he knew he could sell it. And that's oh, been wow. a very powerful lesson to me. We've always tried over the years to make our trailers, you just saw one, our images look as good as possible. So wow. and it, it, like it's reverse marketing. So, and, and find he used the poster to find the audience. We well, used the poster to find the synopsis. It sounds like the entire thing. And that, and you know, they this is fascinating because they, you know, they say things work best when you plan backwards. And I remember, I think it might have been the panel we were on. There was something we were both speaking on, where your number one piece of advice for filmmakers was that you have to nail distribution because distribution is the product. And I think there's something in that for all kinds of creatives, right? Because of course the conference is, is, is every kind of creativity. We're trying to be as diverse as possible. But if you don't have any, you know, it's like communicating a message. If nobody's listening, uh, are you really communicating anything? And if you understand your audience, sounds like Roger Corman does, you know, start with that because that's, you know, the experience is what you're creating. It's amazing. So uh, Hannah, I, how about you? Hmm? Go, go oh, ahead. I, I was going to talk briefly about our film school because we do yeah. have a film school. We got an MA. George is here on that a while ago. We have a BA and the two-year college degree. But if you come to Raindance to learn filmmaking, you will be sadly disappointed because at Raindance, we do not teach filmmaking. We, however, we make filmmakers. It's a very different way of looking at the... Mm the business plus the creative side, and of course the craft. 
yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say I had all these questions for you. We don't have Go a ahead. huge amount of time because it's been so amazing, fascinating. Um, what I'm looking at my questions, thinking, what would be the number? Well, here's the actually here's the crux of it, right? How do you learn filmmaking? That's the first one. How would okay. you sum that up? I'm going to ask you that same question back, but I'm going to change one word. Instead of filmmaking, I'm going to ask you, how do you learn to ride a bicycle? Well, I, I, so, so I already think I know the I, I have an answer to the question. And the answer is make 10 terrible films. It's just yeah. a fantastic way to you learn, learn by to doing. You, yeah. you don't sit in a lecture room with somebody pointing at a bicycle saying, put your foot on the pedal and put your hand. You just teeter along. And yeah. Maybe you start with training wheels, but you want to get them off as soon as possible, right? Mm. And break it. And then you realize in post, oh, wow, if we'd only shot cutaways, this whole scene would be usable. And I think creatives in any form, I know novelists, I know dancers, actors, and so on, you need to be prepared to make mistakes because that's the only way you learn. And God knows I've made every single mistake under the sun. It's embarrassing. I'm hoping you don't mention two more of those. Well, I, you know, actually what I was going to say is my, one of my favorite quotes that I've quoted before uh, at the conference is that the difference between the teacher and the student is that the teacher has failed more times than the student has tried. <laughs> and I love that quote because it sort of deals with the imposter syndrome and everything. Now, we're, we're pretty much out of time. Is there any last piece of advice that you would give? I'm going to post the Rain Dance uh, website right now in the, in the chat. Uh, yeah. Let me... Same We've got list. over 2,000 blog articles on our website by all kinds of people. So please have a look there. We have a membership program that starts with freemium and goes up to 100 pounds a year. Um, there are lots of, lots of stuff doing. And of course, the festival opening night is the 27th of October this year in the center of London. It's going to be hybrid this year. We're going to, instead of playing each film two or three times in the cinema, it plays once and it goes online. Um, and we have a whole bunch of industry stuff that we're really excited about. Wow. Yeah. So you're basically not sleeping much. No, and we're, I'm, I produce too. I've got three films going right now. So um, <laughs> yeah, no, well, I'll sleep when it's over. How about that? Well, thank you. Uh, just uh, thank you very much, Elliot. It's such a pleasure. Uh, one more important thing to announce is that actually Elliot is presenting his 39 minute film school in the <laughs> next session after this keynote. Uh, let me see. Room four. Room four. There we go. Room four. Uh, so please check that out. And um, actually, uh, I was going to do this a little bit later, but let's do this now. Is uh, is Aiden there? Can you can you hear me, Aiden? This is Aiden is here. All right, let's uh, let me see if I can spotlight you as well. We're going to give away uh, one of your rain dance uh, vouchers here. Uh, Elliot has uh, very very kindly uh, offered three one thousand pound. That's about fourteen hundred dollar um, discount codes for the rain dance education um, programs, which is wonderful. And uh, Aiden is going to announce the winner from this session. So uh, over to you, Aiden. Thank you, Maxim. Uh, lovely to be here. Lovely to meet you, Elliot. Um, we've got loads of raffles going on during the conference. There were there are five raffles taking place today alone. We've already given away a Dell Precision 5750 laptop earlier. Sorry if you missed that. It's gone. Um, but we've got one more uh, rain dance voucher. We've got some mentorship sessions with Film Do and Artists United. So if you attend live, you're automatically entered. So keep your eyes peeled for those. Uh, as Maxim said, Elliot has given us three £1,000, $1,400 rain dance education vouchers, which are fantastic. They've got a plethora, a smorgasbord of courses uh, available on the raindance.ac.uk website. Uh, and they're, they're online too. I should mention they're, they're online. online. They're evening and weekend courses, yes. Yes. Um, and also Elliot has uh, given us a discount code to all attendees of the conference. So uh, after the conference is over, you will all receive an email with this discount code uh, for all the, uh, all the courses if you don't win a thousand pound voucher. Um, but without further ado, let's, let's give away this voucher. Uh, I have gone through all of the current present attendees in this very room and uh, the winner as randomly selected by my random uh, thing generator is 
Emily Cook. Congratulations. Congratulations. So, Emily, if you are there, please uh, send me a direct message in the chat with your email and I can uh, pass on your details. And as I say, there's one more uh, rain dance voucher to give away. So make sure you attend live if you would like that. And uh, Emily, congratulations on your imminent knowledge that you will be <laughs> uh, osmosizing. Uh, back to you, Maxim and Elliot. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aiden. That's awesome. Where, where's Emily? Where's Emily? Is she here? I think is Emily in the in the let's see if uh... I'm here. You're there. Oh, there you are, Emily. Where are you based, Emily? Uh, I'm in southern Illinois. All right, cool. Trump plan. Hey, these are on Zoom, so you you'll get a lot of, I hope. And if you don't, you can complain to Maxim. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure I'll learn a lot. Fantastic. Right. Well, uh, so uh, let me see how we're doing for time here. First of all, I must say uh, thank you so, so much, Elliot. Big applause for Elliot Grove. And uh, we posted the links to the website. As Aidan said, you'll be, you'll be getting uh, links and emails and information post-conference. Uh, but thank you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in London uh, uh, very soon, I hope. Right. Thank you. Now. I'll see you in... See you in 20 minutes at the 39 minutes. Yeah, in 20 school. minutes at the at the at your 39 minute film school, which is just <laughs> gonna be fantastic. Right. So now um just a couple more little things as we as we move towards our uh, uh second half of day two. Uh the first is that as a conference, we are supporting two charities. One is uh, Artists United, who are a fantastic organization connecting artists and supporting mutual um, mutual engagement and support. The link to Artists United is on the uh, homepage. We're also supporting a charity called Awareness Ties, who uh, raise awareness on a number of causes around the world. And I'd like to just introduce a, a campaign that Awareness Ties are running right now, where we've got a link to this campaign on the homepage on our website, creativityconference.is. And it's a, uh, it's a, a campaign called Selfie to Support. Now, uh, this is a social impact campaign to raise awareness for causes through selfies and stories. You can upload a selfie and a story and everything that you share helps to support the causes uh, that as Awareness Ties called it, that tie us all together. And it's just a beautiful system. You can upload funny images. And every month, uh, they're selecting um, selfies and stories to be published in their Aware Now magazine, which has 16 million readers every month, maybe even 18 million. So you can share a selfie and a story. There's a chance to win a T-shirt um, based on the uh, cause of your choice. And they have a table of different causes that you can raise awareness about. I'm just going to briefly play you their beautiful intro video for uh, for this campaign. We are aware. Now is the time to come together. Each of us has a cause we're tied to. In each of our causes are tied together by one cause that unites us all, the human cause. Awareness Ties is proud to present the Table of Causes, building blocks for raising awareness and support for the causes that tie us together. As we explore the science of our humanity, one cause and one story at a time, we share what makes us human. You are invited to share your selfie and your story to show support for your cause. Together, we are aware now. It's just such a, a fantastic campaign and I really encourage you to check it out. Just click the link on the homepage and, uh, and contribute to that campaign. The last thing for me right now, before we hand over to our afternoon sessions is to introduce a competition actually this is a i hope elliot would like this this is a 15 second film competition being run by jeff greenberg who is speaking at the conference and uh I, rather than me introduce Hi. this uh, myself i'm just going to hand over to jeff 
and let him introduce it. This is a competition that's being run in parallel with the conference. And uh, well, you'll see for yourself. Uh, it's just great fun and I encourage you to participate. Let's take a look at this, uh, this video. Hi, I'm Jeff Greenberg. I want you to know we're running a short film workshop during the Creativity Conference. The big idea here is the camera in your pocket is better than what I used in film school, and it's giving us great freedom in storytelling. A story is merely about five to seven shots, more or less, a beginning, a middle, an end. And if you're going to create something, just follow your instincts and worry about the length later. This is about creativity, not about getting it perfect. You see, you're working with a net. Failure is okay. If you don't like it, just don't show it. It's meant to be like a writer's prompt. Don't censor yourself. It's about iteration and you learn from failure. Common questions you might have? Well, how long should it be? Should be about 15 to 45 seconds, 30 or so is average. What tools should you use? Use any tools you have access to. If you're not a filmmaker, I highly recommend either Adobe Rush or iMovie, mostly because they've got automatic tools to fix audio. Be aware that using commercial music will get you flagged if you choose to post this on social media. And here's a quick recap for you. It's due Monday, August 8th. That gives you the weekend. It's 15 to 45 seconds, max one minute. You use the YouTube format for export or iPhone or iPad. If you look at this resources page, it'll give you some free music, links to some tutorials. The submission link is right there, bit.ly slash 15 sec cc info. If you have any questions, you can reach me at 15 seconds at Jay Greenberg Consulting. A free screening workshop will be announced for next week for people who choose to participate. And as a final thought, I'll tell you the same thing I tell filmmakers. The act of trying is more important than success. Thanks and good luck. Right. Wonderful. So uh, all the information is right there. Uh, check out the uh, 15 second uh, film competition that Jeff's running. It's just fantastic. And he does a lot of mentoring for people who contribute content. And I, I recommend it. So that's all from us for now for our uh, keynote for day two. All that remains is uh, to thank Elliot Grove again. Thank you so much for joining us, Elliot. It's been absolutely wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for coming along to our keynote. And now is the time for you to grab a fresh cup of coffee or juice or tea or water or gin. No, don't, don't do the gin. You need to concentrate. And have a lovely afternoon. And um, if you would like to join us, don't forget, we have the social meetup uh, that begins at 5.30 p.m. New York time. Uh, the, the room link is uh, being sent out to you already, and I, I hope to see you there. Have a lovely afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming along. Thanks, Maxim. <clears throat> Thank you all. Thanks for laughing at my jokes. <laughs>